local goers and taking the right things home for the market. Thank you for the uh, invitation and for the invitation to visit the institute as well. Um, so whatever I say that's, that's new is joint with Bray. And let me start with uh, um, <coughs> uh, a version of local global compatibility uh, modulo P uh, following Emerton. and the classical case. So if rho is a mod p Galois representation of the absolute Galois group of q, irreducible, uh, I won't bother to say continuous, I won't bother to write continuous, I said it. Um, and odd, which we know by uh, Sarah's conjecture, theorem of Karen Benton Berger implies that it's modular in the sense that it arises from a modular form. So it arises in the cohomology of, of, uh, of modular curves. And so we can associate to it uh, a smooth admissible representation and characteristic P of GL2 of the finite Adels by taking the cohomology of the tower of modular curves. So this will be over all open compact uh, subgroups of GL2 of the finite Adels. Taking FP bar coefficients. And to be consistent with later conventions, I'll include a tape twist. So this has an action, the Galois group, since the curves are defined over Q, and of GL2. of the Adels. So as I said, this is just the usual modular curve of level U. And then if you take, so I'll call this pi of rho, uh, the Galois covariant uh, homomorphisms from rho, well, let me go ahead and call it V rho, to this big pi. We know this is non zero by, by modularity by Tara Ventenberger. And now this has an action of GL2 of the finite adels. And uh, <clears throat> what Emerton does is uh, for the local Galois representations, so for any local um, so GQV to GL2 of FP bar. He defines a local factor um, pi V of sigma. So this will be a smooth admissible representation. of GL2 of QV. Um, under one technical assumption in the case where V is equal to P, we 
namely that sigma is not equivalent. So I'm going to write this symbol for up to twist. Okay, so not twist equivalent to one star zero omega, and this will be the cyclotomic character. So not uh, twist equivalent. So he defines local factors and proves that this representation uh, factors as a restricted tensor product of, the, of these local factors. Um, so when he proves so the theorem, again, this is due to Emerton, that uh, so he also has to assume that the local, oh, and this is uh, only in the case where V is equal to P. So assuming da, 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 this is if V is equal to P. So now assume that rho, well, I guess I also have to assume P is greater than 2, and rho restricted to GQP is not twist equivalent to either this or uh, representation of this form, then pi of rho is isomorphic to a tensor product of these pi v's, so this is overall v, of rho restricted to gqv. And what I want to do is consider the generalization of this. To the setting of GL2 over a totally real field. And say what, what I can about it. Um, so. Now, we don't know a priori that any row is modular, but suppose we do start with a row from GF to GL2 of FP bar, which arises from the Hilbert modular eigenform, or from a uh, cuspidal holomorphic automorphic representation of GL2 over F. And then we know from, from uh, Taylor's construction of the associated Galois representation, the Galois representation associated to a Hilbert modular form that, in fact, rho arises in the cohomology of a suitable Shimura curve. X, D, U, so a Shimura curve over F. Or if you like, in the P torsion of the Jacobian of a Shimura curve. Um, Associated to an open compact subgroup of D tensor, the finite Adels, and to get a curve. Um,
is a quaternion algebra which is split at exactly one infinite place. And then in this situation, we can do an analogous construction to the one still on the board above. So I can define pi d to be the limit over open compact u. And now this admits an action of gf cross the adelic points of the group. And um, we can take, again, the, well, I can even recycle a little bit here. And just change this to f and put some d's here. Not equal 0 by assumption. And then we have a representation, again, a smooth admissible representation, which we could at least hope factors so the hope is, I won't even say it's conjecture, that pi d of rho is isomorphic to tensor product over the finite places of f of some pi v of rho restricted to G, gfv, where pi v maps the isomorphism classes of, um, I'll just write gv. So local Galois represent, mod p local Galois representations. to a certain smooth admissible representations over fp bar of dv cross. And at least for v uh, not dividing p, there's at least a candidate map here, a local Langlands uh, map, not correspondence. So a, a candidate pi v to insert into this uh, conjecture. So in fact, it's the same definition as Emerton if the, if, uh, the quaternion algebra is split at v. And we can define a local factor as well in the case where this really is a quaternion algebra. So this is if v is, uh, so if v splits or is ramified at v. But for v dividing p, there are problems. So um, we don't know, at least I don't know how to define this uh, pi v. Except in the case when, when uh, well, except in the case of GL2 of QP.
um, this. Uh, It might be zero. <laughs> um, right. So uh, let's see. Oh, and maybe I should also remark that if V divides P um, and DV is ramified at V, then what you would get here should have infinite length. Um, but sticking to the GL2 case, so weight conjectures and theorems, what they do is specify the, um, the sub-representations under a maximal compact of the, of the, the hypothetical pi v of sigma. So I specify the irreducible sub-representations of pi v of sigma restricted to, uh, well, I guess I can say O d v cross. So units in a maximal order or GL2 of, um, of OFV. Or, like I said, hypothetical, since this isn't defined. But at least it says something about it. So this is um, this was done in certain cases. Um, by myself and Buzzard and Jarvis, and cases of it proved, and the conjecture generalized by G and Shine and G and Sabbath. Um, that's true. That's true. That's right. I mean, no, I do have, it should be finite length. <laughs> it should be. Hmm? You don't have to? No. no. Did you want to <laughs> share that? <laughs> oh, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. Oh. <laughs> Right, that's right, yes. So that's a reason to expect it, is that um, Brian Peskin has defined finite length representations, which are candidates, but they define infinitely many such. Yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> That's true. OK, so now what I want to do Oh, well, I guess coming back to this point. Uh, so it, already in the case of, um, of f equal q, if you consider a quaternion algebra, there you have this dichotomy that, uh, that, the, um, that the representations of GL2 of qp, which appear, have finite length, but the representations of vp cross, which appear, don't have finite length. So. OK. So. Now let me, in the global setting, at least define uh, a local factor. So I'm going to continue to assume that um, rho and d are as before. So d is such that rho does occur in the cohomology of the um, associated Shimura curves. And I'm going to fix a place dividing p. 
and and I'll make the following additional assumptions in order to define the local factor. Um, so for places v not dividing p, um, I will assume that rho restricted to inertia at v is uh, twist equivalent to the cell in putting myself in a semi-stable situation. For v dividing p or the discriminant of the quaternion algebra, I want to assume that uh, the local representation is not unramified up to twist. So I'm grouping the, these assumptions this way. Because uh, the grouping is consistent with the reasons for the assumptions, which I'll come back to in a moment. And for primes dividing p, I will further assume that the local representation is reducible. Uh, and I'll also assume that, um, that dv is split. And then for the prime, for the fixed prime p at which I'll be working, uh, I'll assume that fp itself is unramified and that the local representation, uh, besides being reducible, is generic. And I'll come back to the definition of generic. So just quickly, the reasons for these assumptions. Um, so this is entirely for simplicity, just to make uh, the definitions and notation simpler. You can ignore this. Um, and similarly, this condition can at least be relaxed to saying that the restriction is not scalar, or not twist equivalent to the trivial representation. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that's to ensure, so the technical condition is still there. Um, in order to get a multiplicity one result, in order to define the local factor at the prime p at which we're working. And similarly, this assumption, um, but here it's a bit more serious, it could still be relaxed uh, to some irreducible cases if fv is unramified over q using work of Chang, but I'm not sure what the exact statement would be at this point. And then this is um, the situation where, where we can say something. So this is, the, this is what's really relevant here. And so let me fix isomorphisms for v not dividing the discriminant. Yes? Sorry, is this I'm going to repeat it later okay. when it becomes relevant. Um, <clears throat> and then for v not dividing p, I'll define an open compact subgroup, uv, so u0 of v, uh, the Iwahori, if rho restricted to gv is not unramified up to twist. Um, Right, and v doesn't divide the discriminant. And the uh, um, maximal compact otherwise. There's a v 
region. And for V, dividing P um, maximal compact if rho on inertia. No. Is um, omega star zero one, where the, uh, coming from a finite flat group scheme, so per ramifier, and u zero of the otherwise. And this is, I guess, just for V not equal to P. And then character of UV. psi v composed with the determinant times the character and this is where um, Rho restricted to inertia at V has the form. And of course, I'm, I'm uh, identifying characters of, well, uh, identifying characters of O, F, V cross and, uh, and, and characters of inertia by local class field theory. So this will be psi v times omega mu v star zero one. So, sorry, what was the question? So omega is a cyclotomic mu v. So, if the Local representation on inertia has this form, then this is the associated character of the open compact. And this is if uv equals u0 of e. And then chi will be the product, so this is over v not equal to p of the chi v as a character of the product of the uvs. So I've just defined some open compact subgroup away from P and some character based on the local data. So that I can define pi P of rho as just the chi eigenspace. Of the um, of the representation of GL two of the Adels. So this is a representation of GL two of uh, of FP. And um, And now if I write, um, yes, yes, these are v's not equal to the one at which I'm working. All v. So this is trivial for all but finitely many v.
which I assumed at the uh, which I assumed at the start here. I just I, to save time, I just wrote it in a unified way instead of breaking it up into cases. If v doesn't divide p, then this is one. This is one if v doesn't divide p. So um, this is all auxiliary stuff. The, uh, at the prime at which we're working, so I v, no, P, um, the representation is so to be consistent, I guess I should call the twist psi p, and then the character um, I can write as a product of fundamental characters to some power So I've just twisted so that I have a 1 here. And then the remaining character here, I'm writing as a, this is the cyclotomic character times some, uh, some product of fundamental characters, where here ta runs over the set of embeddings of the residue field into fp bar. And omega ta is, so later on I want to think of omega ta in fact as a character of, um, of the decomposition group of, of the entire local Galois group. So, um, and I'll also start writing k for, for the um, completion at, at p at which we're working. So this is um, the map gotten from class field theory and sending the uniformizer p to 1 or equivalently gotten from the action um, by Kummer theory on the, uh, on the q minus first roots of minus p and then embedding via ta. So since the character here uh, has order dividing, has to have order dividing uh, q minus 1, where q is the order of k, one can write these exponents between 0 and p minus 1. Omega ta composed with phi is just omega ta to the p. Um, and uh, so the R, these exponents are between 0 and p minus 1. And now I can uh, define generic generic means that all the R ta are actually less than or equal to p minus 3. And not all 0 and not all p minus 3. So that's the definition of generic. And then the, um, the weight, which should always appear, and now one knows does always appear, and pi p would be the character by which we're twisting times the tensor product over all tau and s 
of the r tau symmetric power of the two-dimensional representation of GL2 of the residue field, um, where, of course, the action here is via the embedding tau. And since r tau is less than or equal to p minus 1, in fact, less than or equal to p minus 3, these representations are irreducible. So this is an irreducible representation of GL2 of k, which we're going to also think of as a representation of GL2 of, uh, of OK. And then In this case, one knows, so at least if p is at least 7, and the um, restriction to f zeta p is irreducible, then the dimension of the space of homomorphisms from sigma 0 into pi p pi p of rho, which was defined, uh, defined here. So this is the definition, the ad hoc definition of the local factor. And yes? Sorry? What was the definition of the ad hoc? This is the definition. This is it. The chi eigenspace in where chi is just this character of the open compact away from p. So this was done just to get multiplicity 1, okay. which is the statement I'm now making. So this is, um, this is homomorphisms. These are the GL2 OK homomorphisms. And one more. So this is uh, a consequence of um, of the existence of an ordinary lift in order to make sure that this weight actually occurs. So that tells you that there is an embedding. So the existence of an ordinary lift gives you tells you, in fact, that this weight does occur uh, for this row. And then by um, modified taylor wiles you can, in fact, get multiplicity 1. And as a corollary, then, if pi of rho factored, then the local factor at p would be exactly this pi p of rho. So the corollary is that if uh, pi of rho were, isom were isomorphic to a tensor product of pi v's, then the local factor at p would be the above pi p of rho. Notice that the, this was a global definition of the, of the local factor. But it's what we can say something about. Um, and what can we say about it? So. So the first bit of information is, the, uh, is about the set of weights. Um, and 
let me first twist. So that row restricted to GP has the form, um, so an unramified character, mu, times the same as above, and character mu inverse here. And we then have an extension class Is that right? GK um, and the coefficients given by the ratio of the characters. So this is an f-dimensional space, and how this uh, so the, the value of this extension class determines the the set of weights that appear in the in the BDJ conjecture. So a set of weights W of rho. So these are irreducible um, FP bar representations. of GL2 of the residue field, which one, so the conjecture states, and it's almost known, I think, that this is precisely the set of irreducible sub-representations um, of the local factor restricted to GL2 of OK. So in fact, by so we're in the generic case. So by um, by Toby's results, we have the in, what looks like the harder inclusion that the that the um, that the representations that arise contain those that are conjectured, and um, maybe we're close to knowing the other inclusion as well. Do you know the other inclusion? So there's still a problem of ruling out ir irregular weights in principle. Um, and this, uh, restriction, this local representation, can also be described in terms of a fontaine le Fay module. So this will be free of rank 2 over k tensor fp bar, so a fontaine le Fay module with coefficients in fp bar, a fontaine le Fay module um, over OK, but with coefficients in fp bar. But Reduced modulo p. So, as I said, coefficients in fp bar. And we can think of this as the product over the embeddings of copies of fp bar. And so we can also decompose the, the Fontaine Le Fay module by the idempotence. And we can choose a basis. Um, say E and F,
So to define a Fontana phi module, I need a filtration and a, uh, and a fee, but I can think of, so I'll try and capture the information. Concisely, by defining the Frobenius on the graded, um, which I can do in characteristic P, so this will go to M um, talk composed with phi inverse. So the E ta is in degree zero, and F ta is in degree R ta plus one. So here I'm writing a basis for these um, two-dimensional vector spaces over Fp bar. So what I'm going to do is parameterize the extension class in terms of the fontaine lafay module by writing down the matrix of this phi So such a matrix for each ta, where alpha is an fth root of mu of the Frobenius, so mu being a ramified character. This is well defined. Take an fth root. The Fontana phi module has to have this structure for some. x ta in fp bar. Um, so, uh, so this um, h1 of Galois representations can be identified with the extensions of rank 1 Fontana phi modules being parameterized by this, by this x ta. So the c row corresponds to um, this Fontana phi parameter in, uh, in k tensor fp bar. And then the set of weights for this row is in bijection with the set of subsets of the um, set of embeddings at which the parameter vanishes. So the, the number of weights is 2 to the d for some d. But you see that the information about the weights is, is, um, is, in a sense, crude. Take, for example, the case, the extreme case, where none of the x tall vanish. Then there's just one weight, but there's a, uh, an n minus 1 dimensional projective space minus and hyperplanes worth of extensions, all with the same set of weights. So the question is, does this pi p of rho see the extension class? And if so, how? So. So considering the, the extreme case, which in a sense is also the most generic case, where there's just one weight, but there are a lot of possible extensions, and in this case, um, The, uh, 
the invariance under, we write u11 p for, um, for con so pro p iwahori congruent to 1 star 0, 1 modulo p. This is true to the uh, f dimensional, this f in case I haven't defined it, though it's appeared several times. It's not the same as that f, but is the degree of the extension. So this is true to the f dimensional indexed by uh, subsets of the set of embeddings um, where um, the a to j is for the action of u0 of p mod u11 p. And these a to j have the property here. that the ordinary weight, the sigma 0, is a Jordan Holder factor of the induction. So sigma 0 sits in the say, j position of the, um, the hypercube um, Jordan Holder structure of the uh, induction from U0 of P to GL2 of OK on this character A to J. And then wh what I'll do is explain how to see these parameters in the pi p of rho. So the way it works, so I'll write pi p a to j, so this is pi p a to j, for this one-dimensional space. So these are interchanged with the space indexed by the complement by um, by w, by 0, 1, p, 0. But um, pi also defines operators. Uh, in the group ring, so we call this bj a certain explicit um, operator take the sum over elements of the residue field product over tau and j of tau of a to the p minus 1 minus r tau times the matrix um, a110. Uh, a so this is just an element of the group ring. Which has the property of mapping this eigenspace to the, to the one in the circle. Um, yeah, that up. So here you have B S minus J defined analogously. And so you have a, a parameter here. Um, let's call it uh, X sub J. And then So this depends on the, the pi p of rho. And the theorem relates the, the Fontan the phi parameter to the bi parameter in the following way. So this parameter on the, on the GL2 side, mm. so minus so alpha. J is the failure to produce a parameter. That's right, yes. 
Yeah, so xj is just an element of fp bar cross. And let's see if I've got the cardinality right on top. So this is the product over cos nj of, so now these are the fun time of phi parameters, x ta r ta plus 1 over x ta phi inverse, if it's, nope, ta composed with phi, r ta composed with phi plus 1. So, uh, so for f equal 2, for example, what this is saying is that x0, r0 plus 1, v0, v, if I start with a vector here, is equal to um, x1, r1 plus 1, v1, wv. So these Fontana phi parameters depended on a choices. So one thing you can do is just rescale them all. Um, but there was also a choice of an f -th root of the eigenvalue of Frobenius, which also comes out in the wash in this formula, so that this ends up being independent of those choices and equal to this parameter. Right, so yes. This is just times the number. <laughs> yes, just times the number. Well, these were just the weights. Yes, OK. So no. So at least not that I could see. <laughs> um, So the idea of the proof is to consider uh, potentially Barzotti kite lifts. Let's say rho tilde. Um, so these are, in fact, global lifts. So maybe I should say uh, consider lifts rho tilde, which are potentially Barzotti tight. So rho tilde restricted to GK is potentially Barzotti tight of this type. Um, I'll just say type A to J. I guess that works as a type. So, um, and here the, the existence and modularity of such lifts is due to G. Yes. Um, so, so in fact, uh, have I cheated a little that I don't, uh, I guess I don't a priori know multiplicity one, and we need to think carefully about that. So maybe I should write an inclusion here. Um, one can tell from the possible types that these are the only, uh, possible characters on the Iwahori invariants, the proper Iwahori invariants. Um, and one knows by, in fact, by the existence of these lifts, for example, that each of these characters does appear. Um, but like I said, maybe one doesn't actually know multiplicity one, but one doesn't need it to make these definitions and get the, the formula here. Now, from the existence of these lifts, um, 
So the Fontaine Lafay parameters you can um, relate to the, the parameters for the Blaine module. So Toby has also done this kind of thing, yes? Yes? So that what? So that we can't say that if you are ready to use the image Yes, so one can use the images. One can, one can still. Um, One can still define the parameter given the information that we have. Um, so the, the definition of the parameter um, Which question? In order or, or like the most recent question? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me come back to the, the multiplicity one question over there. Let me finish explaining um, the structure of the proof. So the, the parameters for the Fontaine Lafay module give you uh, parameters for the Bray module um, associated to the, the finite flat group scheme, which is the reduction of this p divisible group. Now, uh, from there, you can, in fact, um, get uh, constraints on the, um, on the uh, eigenvalues of phi to the f on the Judah name module of the, the p divisible group. So I guess restricted to GL, where L is the field over which this is a p-divisible group. So you, get, um, so you get constraints, in fact, on the eigenvalues, which, is, which was Blaise's calculation that, that I found um, very pleasantly surprising, the fact that it translates into, rather than conditions on the extension classes that are appearing, conditions on, on the eigenvalues. And then from there, I guess you're home free because you get um, um, so this gives you um, uh, constraints on the on the um, let me call it pi p tilde corresponding by local global compatibility to the associated Vedelin representation to this rho tilde. So the principal series that appear here, you have some constraints on the eigenvalues of Frobenius. And then from the eigenvalues of Frobenius, you can then, since you know that this contains some lattice, let me call it uh, lambda, whose reduction embeds into um, our uh, pi p of rho, from this you can compute the, uh, the x, what did I call it, xj of pi p of rho. So as long as the calculation is happening, so maybe this comes back to the multiplicity one question. Um, so as long as the, uh, as long as the calculation as long as the image of whatever's going on there is, um, is moving around in these eigenspaces, then you can define the parameter. Um, so it may be that one knows, in fact, multiplicity one uh, for these invariants, but I, um, But in, in fact, one can get around it with just the information gotten from these lists. Sorry? Yes. 
Do they appear elsewhere? 